I have another Miller and Kressel MX90. This one was sent in to me from Texas and the customer says it has a low rumble. So let's go ahead and get it hooked up, fire it up and see what happens. Okay, so I don't have any audio going into it right now. The input terminals are disconnected. The speaker terminals are disconnected. So let's go ahead and power it up. And I do hear something. It is making a low rumble, almost like a crackling sound. The level pot is definitely in need of some deoxid. But I don't think that's it because it's turned all the way down right now. And I'm not even touching it and it's going crazy. Well, let's go ahead and clean that pot real quick. And we'll go ahead and clean the low pass filter at the same time while we're here. Okay, let's fire it up again and see what happens. See if it makes any difference. So as it stands, they're both at minimum right now. I'm gonna put the low pass right in the middle, but I'll keep the base level at a minimum. Power on. I'm still hearing something. Wow. That control is like really touchy. It's got a bad control. Well, we'll kill the power to it. I'll get the ohm meter on it. All right, so I've got some test leads and I'm just gonna short them out here. We should get zero, 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 and we do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to get the center terminal and one side, and then we'll just run this up and down. Look at that, it's all over the place. Just for the heck of it. Let's go to a higher range. Let's go to 600K. And I'll put it on min max. Let's put it on max. See what the maximum resistance that it reads is. Well, right there, that's a problem. 171K on a 50K pot. 349k 442k yeah it's toast there it is open still connected take min max off put it back in auto range and i've got four megs and dancing around so i'm gonna bet that's probably going to be the problem Yeah, it's just all over the place, 10 megs. Well, let me go ahead and see if we can find a pot. And as always, I wanna go ahead and just check all the capacitors on this board and just see if they need to be replaced. But I just need to try to find an audio taper 50K pot for this thing and see if we can get it going again. Now this is a B20, a linear taper pot. And we'll go ahead and check it too, just for the fun of it, because I've got the ohmmeter right here and it's only using two of its three leads. and it should be a nice, smooth transition. There it is. So let's go ahead and set the range on this one back to 60K, and it should only go up to 20K. There we go. If you watch the bar graph, as I go down to zero and I slowly increase this, the bar graph should go up very smoothly, and there should be no spikes in it. And it goes up to 15K. There's probably some resistance on it across the circuit board. Yep, but I'd say that uh, 50K base level control is definitely bad. All right, check out what I have right here. These are stereo 50K pots. 50K audio potentiometer right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slap one of these in it. I'll have to heat shrink the leads onto it. You probably saw me use one of these in the Definitive Technologies SuperCube 3 subwoofer, but hopefully it'll work for this application. It is an audio taper 50K pot. I'll just use one section and disregard the other three leads. We won't even worry about those.
All right, the new pot is installed. Now the old pot did have a round shaft. The new one has a knurled shaft. And so I installed it in such a fashion that I can go ahead and attach the set screw so it's not pressing down on one or the other sides. That way I get full extension on the base control knob and it's not pinching the shaft down. So I think it's gonna work just fine. All right, here we go, power on. Is it working? Yes, it is. No noise whatsoever from end to end. Well, that's absolutely perfect. I think I'm probably still gonna go ahead and pull the board out and check all of these capacitors just to make sure they're okay. I did already check the main filter caps and they ESR'd absolutely perfect. I just wanna do a thorough job. So I'll unmount the STK chip, pull the board completely off. I'll have to unsolder this board. Actually, I think I can get to it with this one just by tipping it up. There might be enough lead where I can just kind of get it up diagonally and then we can check all these capacitors on this board. Okay, so there was enough room for me to get the board flipped over without having to unsolder anything. So first we'll start with the little small caps. These are 10 microfarads at 63 volts. First verify lead integrity and we have zero. I see 0.8 ohms, that one is perfect. And 0.86 ohms, perfect. Anything under an ohm on a little small 10 mic and I'm perfectly happy. These are 100 microfarad caps and I see 0.12, I'm great with that. 0.13. 0.14, and then the main power supply filter caps, 0.18 and 0.16. Very happy with every capacitor on this board. I do, however, wanna go ahead and solder the connections on this Molex plug before I put it back together and send it back to my customer. And yes, that's me, I see myself in the reflection. So anyhow, if you look at these connections very carefully, you'll see that almost every one of them has a defect of some type. There's a crack in this one, there's a crack in this one, that one's got a crack, this one's got a crack, this one's got a crack, that one's got a crack. I'm not sure about this one and this one. Those may be the only two good connections here. I suspect that one may have a crack in it as well. But that's why I like to look at these things. So let's go ahead and just add a generous amount of solder to it. Well, no more cracks. I think that's gonna be much, much better. And just like the other ones, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of extra tension to these pins, just to help them grab a little tiny bit better. It's just done by sticking a screwdriver in here, just bending them over ever so slightly, just like that. Don't worry if they're out of round. Because when you go ahead and plug it back on there, it's gonna push it back into shape. Like that one right there. As soon as I plug it on, it's gonna stretch right back out. I just want a little extra pretension on these things. just to get a little better bite. And the same thing right here. Gonna grab it with a pair of pliers and just squeeze it together. Now when I plug it together, I ensure it's gonna have a great connection. Now it's ready for a test. Okay, I've got it connected up. Let's hit play. And it's working. Wow, it's working really good. Only have it connected to a little six inch speaker. So let me disconnect this and I'll hook it up to my dummy load. Okay, there it is connected to the dummy load. So I can crank it up, get some audio out of it. I'm gonna let it run here for probably 15, 20 minutes. Let it get good and hot. Make sure there's not a defect in that STK chip. I don't think there is. I think the base level pot was the whole problem. Plus the bad connections on the Molex plug too. So let it run for 15, 20 minutes. Come back to it, see what it looks like. 
Okay, well I've had the unit running here for quite some time and as you can see, we're up to about 120 degrees on the heat sink itself. And then back here on the dummy load, we're up to 121 degrees. You can see one channel is the only channel being driven into this dummy load at the time. Anyhow, you can see the equalizing resistors on the power supply board are 110 degrees. And the power transformer is about 95 degrees. Anyhow, this thing's been running for, like I said, about 20, 30 minutes or so. Everything's looking good. Take a look at the circuit board here. Yeah, those two big uh, 5 watt power resistors are running at 125 degrees. But I think it's going to be fine. I think I'm going to button it up. Well, as best I can, put it back in the box and get ready to ship it back to my customer. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed the repair on the Miller & Kressel MX90 subwoofer internals being sent to me from, I think it was Texas, just replacing the base level pot. Go ahead and test all the capacitors and resolder that Molex plug. I think this thing's going to be just fine. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.